Hey, what's going on guys? This is Final K for Monkey Madness. Uh, today I'm going to be making the second part of the series on how to build solo laners. This video will be about bluestone warriors or ability-based warriors. Um, it's going to be built a little differently than the auto attack warriors, obviously. So we're just going to go through them, starting with Amaterasu. So with Amaterasu, um, I've said this in the other video where I talk about star items. Uh, you can go Destal or Bluestone. Usually you go Bluestone if you're in like a decent matchup. Um, so you would start with this, you all know that. And then we're gonna go into Warrior Tabai every time. Ninja Tabai is not that great on her. You wanna have the Warrior Tabai for the extra damage on your abilities. Um, go straight into Breastplate if you're against a physical. If you're against a magical, you can maybe go into like a Genji's or like a Shogun's Kasuri because you want cooldown on Ama, but almost always you'll be going Breastplate. And even if you're if you're against like a Sobek or something, you could still go Breastplate because 20% cooldown so you can heal with your one. And the only time you'll get ganked is by a physical jungler if they have a Sobek solo or something like that. So um, depending on what they have for magical damage, if they have a lot, you can't really go into this, but usually you want to go into Shield of Regrowth, 10% uh, CDR, 300 health, and then the, of course the passive, which is really good on Ama. So Shield of Regrowth a good pickup here, unless they have a lot of magical damage. Um, if they have a lot of magical damage, just go Pestilence or any relevant healing, go Pestilence here. But if not, or if you have to go that there, then go Shield of Regrowth 4th. So then you have uh, the 30% cooldown and this massive health boost, and of course the cooldown or passive or whatever. Um, and then now that Shifters is buffed, Shifters is not a bad item, Ama. Uh, I used to go, and you can still probably get away with going Void Shield. It makes your ult hit for a lot because of that pen and extra 30 power. So Void Shield's not a bad, like, bruiser item on her. And if you were to go Void Shield or Shifters there, I would go Mantle last time. So then you're riding it out with full CDR. Um, you have a good amount of protections on each. You got a good amount of damage with your Void Shield and just your raw uh, base stats and everything. Um, so this would be, like, a normal build, excluding the Shifter Shield. Um, or you would go Shifter Shield and still go Mantle last time. So this would be a decent build. But um, there's some item, other items that are good on Ama. The new Rune Forge is pretty good on Ama because she has uh, Silence, which she'll do more damage with. She has uh, an ult that her last save ult will do more damage because the second hit uh, slows, right? Um, so Rune Forge isn't bad on her. Stone of Gaia is not bad. Again, it's always a situational item that you can pick up because they may have a lot of... Uh, you know, poles or you know, like an Aries ult or something. And if you are ahead, I sometimes just like to go out of the Urchin third item if you're ahead, because you can stack it really easily. It's a lot of defense. Even when the item's not stacked, it's definitely worth it. 250 health, 250 mana plus 35 protections each, which is good. And then it'll only go up from there from stacking it. So this is a pretty standard build on Ama, or at least standard items to go on Ama. So yeah. Um, Last thing that you could think about going is Wingblade. It's Wingblade's not bad on her. It's always been an efficient item, but if you're going into health and you want something like that, usually Shield Regrowth is the thing to go because you get the 10% cooldown and the amazing passive. So, so next up we have Chalk, um, Bluestone on Chalk. All of these warriors basically should or could go Bluestone. Um, I'll just round out the starter real quick, like always. Okay, so then we would go Warrior Tabai on Chalk. He has a lot of abilities that hit hard. They scale well with your Warrior Tabai, and you aren't getting a lot of autos off anyway, so you don't really need attack speed, so that would be standard. Now, Chalk is one of those warriors that could work well with Gladiator Shield. Uh, with his one, he can poke with it and then heal off of it. His two is the same. And if he, he, he can hit like a lot of people with his ult, then he can get like a 12.5% return, percent return if he hits all five of the enemies. So that's decent on him. Gladiator Shield's not bad. You can use it to stay in lane for a while and just keep poking. And you don't really have to worry about mana, so you're getting a lot of health sustain. But it's never wrong just to go Breastplate, CDR, Physical Defense, you know, the whole thing. Um, if I were playing Chalk, I would go High of the Urchin uh, after my second item. I, it wouldn't be in this order, right? It's either one of these. So it would be High of the Urchin after Gladiator Shield or High of the Urchin after Breastplate. Um, so yeah, High of the Urchin so you can stack that up. Shogun's isn't bad on him just because, like, <laughs> you need that uh, CDR for one. And it also helps your team out with the passive. But if they just have a ton of Magical D and you think you're just going to get blown up, Pestilence is the go-to. You're not building a lot of health, so Bulwark isn't that great. Pestilence is good if they have any relevant sustain, and it's just a good item because it has 80 Magical Protection and 200 health. That's insane. Um, so then I would go Shifters after my fourth item on Chalk. This new Shifters is pretty good. It's got 70 power, right? 70 power for your abilities is pretty dang good. Um, and if you have it with your Gladiator Shield, you're getting a lot of damage just in this build. So say I went Warrior Tabai, Gladiators, Out of the Urchin, Pestilence, Shifters. 
It's a lot of damage, and Chalk has to do a little bit of damage to be relevant in the late game, or else he's going to be doing nothing, right? So I would go Runeforge here, so it would be either, assuming I went Gladiators, it would be warrior type of Gladiators, High of the Urchin, Pestilence, Shifters, Runeforge. Now I have a good amount of defense, good amount of health. I'm going to be pretty tanky, but I'm going to be doing a lot of damage with the increased damage on Runeforge plus all the power I already have. Or it would just be the same thing with Breastplate, so... Not a bad thing to look into this build, but uh, there's some other items that are good on Chalk. Shield Regrowth has been an item that could be used on Chalk because of his heal. He'll be so fast, he'll never be able to escape his slow out of his rain dance. Um, so that's not a bad item. Mantle, of course, is always an item. You can go CDR and, of course, the passive that'll keep you live late game plus the protections. Um, Wing Blade's not bad on Chalk. Again, it's one of those situational items that they have a lot of slows or just like a, a super important slow. You could pick it up. The stats on it are good. And of course, you can always go Void Shield on Chalk because. How many Fae invited me? Oops. Um, you can always go Void Shield if you need that pen or whatever. Um, I would go Void Shield instead of like Shifters, though, if you were to build Void Shield. So this is a pretty standard build on Chalk. Um, so yeah. So next up, we have Guan Yu. Usually go Blue Stun on him, but you can go Mark of the Vanguard or a Tier 2 Breastplate start. Um, Chalice of Healing, and then I would go Multipots because usually you're spamming a lot of mana in lane, so you kind of want Multipots for a little bit of mana regen. Um, so then of course we go Warrior Tabai. It scales with his abilities well. He doesn't auto attack obviously a lot, so Warrior Tabai is the go-to. Um, you can, I could see you going Gladiator Shield here instead of Breastplate. Um, you can get a lot of value out of Gladiator Shield if you can hit multiple people with your 3 or your ult. But usually I would just rush Breastplate because 20 CDR is more important. You want to have your, uh, and the mana regen is more important, plus 300 mana, of course. Um, that's more important because you want to be spamming your heal. Now, Guan's a little unique. He's the only god I would do this on. I would rush Genji's because of the cooldown. MP5 plus the uh, passive is really good for cooldown. And go straight into Spear's room. So at this point, I'm pretty tanky with all these protections. I'm not building any health for a reason. Uh, Guan has a lot of effective health through his heal, and if you just build full CDR as fast as possible, you can spam heal um, a ton, which is pretty much all you're doing, and that's kind of the only reason you pick Guan is for the heal. Um, so you want to get this full CDR as fast as possible. Notice I'm not building health, any health again because I don't want to. I just want to build or have CDR for the effective health through my heal, um, and I just want to be a heal bot late game, so I max out my CDR as fast as possible. Now... Juan still does a considerable amount of damage, so Runeforge isn't bad on him. Your two slows and your ult slows. So if I slow with the first hit of my Guan ult, then all my other ults are going to be hitting harder with my Runeforge hammer passive, so that's not a bad item to look into. Um, if you want other damage, you can go Void Shield. I wouldn't go both these items. Usually you're not going to be trying to do too much damage. You just want to be a heal bot late game and stay alive. So I would go one of these items, and then last item I would go like a health item like... Um, Maybe, oh wait, I wasn't even in the health tree. I would go like a, a mid-guardian male or like a, um, maybe like a stone of Gaia. So I'll put mid-guardian male in there because that's not a bad item on Guan. Um, mid-guardian male for the, a little bit of extra health or um, stone of Gaia if they have any relevant CC that I can ignore with stone of Gaia. Also the regen on is decent for your, um, your MP5 and everything. So at this point I have so much MP5 that I'm never going to be running out of mana. And of course, Wingblade is always a valuable option, or Mantle if we didn't max out our CDR earlier. Say we went like Hide of the Urchin here for some reason, which is a possible thing. If we're so far ahead, we could possibly go Hide of the Urchin and go Hide of the Urchin here into like a room forge into like a Mantle, so that's not a bad idea. I forgot to um, do the relics on the first two characters, Amaterasu on, and Chalk. So Amaterasu, you would just go um, Teleport Sunder every time. And then Chalk teleport Sunder every time, basically. Maybe Thorns on Chalk, because he has that heal and he can reflect a lot of damage. But Guan's a little different. I would go teleport on him. And almost every time I would go meditation, just because, you know, mana regen. Uh, it's really good on him. You know, you tell your team to group up med, and then you heal. You spam heal a few times, then everybody's full HP, right? So med's not bad on him. Also, med's a little bit underrated, because the mana regen is based off of the person you med's mana pool. So, like, a mage's mana pool would actually be really high so the med would be very valuable so it's not bad on uh, guan but pretty much only guan i would go it on and of course you can never go wrong with just going sunder you know uh sundering some someone dashing through them and threeing them they're gonna be taking a lot of damage or sundering someone and ulting them so sunder's not a bad idea either so this is how you would build guan 
So next up we have Hercules. Hercules. So bluestone on Herc, maybe Mark the Vanguard, but usually you just want bluestone. Um, health chalice into health pots. We can pick it, so that's our start. We all know that. Um, then we would go Warrior Tabai, straight into Breastplate. Now, I wouldn't go Gladiator Shield on him just because you're usually only hitting like one person with your push or your pull push combo, so Breastplate's more important. Unless you're getting blown up by their magical damage and you know that like they're gonna, I don't know, Fafnir stun you into a Kraken, into like a Soul Ult or something like that. For some reason they have that. Uh, I would just go Shield of Regrowth, more CDR. The passive on it is amazing with Herc. You just, every time your um, heal is up with this amount of CDR, your passive on your Shield of Regrowth will be up. So you, every time you click through, you're going to have your Shield of Regrowth passive. So that's really good to go on him. Um, now we could go uh, Shogun's Kasuri here in this item instead of Pestilence. But uh, in this meta, a lot of times her can get blown up with a like a sunder if they stun you and sunder you you kind of want like more defense and extra health so usually i would go pestilence here although shogun's wouldn't be bad if you're that far ahead max out your cdr and you can basically do whatever you want because you'll have your abilities up all the time so if i went pestilence there i would go shifters here um shifters is kind of replaced void shield usually you would go void shield here with this pestilence and then you would have a lot of damage with your pen but shifters is decent now especially with uh 70 power and all those protections you get um what is it 60 protect no it's yeah 60 protections oh, I, i'm terrible at math 50 protections each which is pretty good um so I would go shifters there and then straight into mantle. So now my CDR is maxed out. I have a bunch of defense, a good amount of damage. And, you know, of course, warriors do most of their damage from their uh, base stats. So just having full CDR is good. Now, um, you could replace the shifters with a runeforged or a void shield. These are decent options, but shifters is pretty cheap compared to void shield. But runeforged is even cheaper. Um, but you don't get any protections, but you do get health from reforged. So these are two different, decent, uh, decent uh, replacements for shifter shield and um, of course you can never go wrong with a stone of Gaia if it fits or um, like a mid guardian male if they just have so much attack speed or whatever so this wouldn't be bad uh, on Herc and then you would your relic would be of course teleport first item and then sunder if you sunder somebody push them and ult them they're going to be taking so much damage um, so that's not bad on him also something else you could go is thorns um, you can reflect a lot of damage with this heal if you're getting blown up and you pop your thorns and then get your heal off. You reflected all that damage plus you heal it off of what they uh, did to you. So you'll be you'll still be able to be in the fight. So um, this would be the build on Herc almost every time. So something like that. So Nike is a little bit weird. She is a Destal Warrior and I could have put her in my other video with the other build, the health build where you build like Mystic Mail and everything. But she... She's a Destal Warrior, but she's ability-based. Uh, she does all of her damage in like team fights and everything based off of her abilities. So even though she builds Destal, she's going to be in this video. Uh, it makes more sense. So you go Warrior Tabite on Nike. Make sure you rend hit for a lot. Um, and now if you're going the ability-based build, you would be going straight into Breastplate. Now, I would go High of the Urchin every time on Nike. Her ult scales off of her health. You're a team fight warrior, so you can build the stacks. If you're in the middle of a team fight, you're going to be getting a lot of assists because, again, you're just ulting against all the enemy team. And if you get any kills off that, your assists are going to build fast for High of the Urchin. So High of the Urchin, third on Nike every time. Um, if they have a lot of magical defense, you got to build a magical de defense item here. But if you're like ahead and you can get away with it and you're getting a lot of stacks on this, just building this Runeforge with the health is important. More health for your ult, so that's important. You slow everybody with your ult, so your Runeforge can be doing, uh, it's going to be procced on everybody if you do damage to them. So if I went Runeforge there, I would go my magical defense here. Um, Pestilence, or you can get away with Bulwark. Um, Bulwark's kind of one of those luxury items on Nike. It's another shield for her, so she becomes nearly unkillable. I'm just getting invites, sorry. Um, she becomes nearly unkillable because she has another shield plus her old shield. So now she has a lot of health, right? So Borwick isn't bad. If you can't afford it, just go Pestilence. You know, defense, Pestilence is a really good item for Magical D. And then uh, last item, I would go even more health, and it would be maybe a Stone of Gaia if they have any relevancy with that. But if not, just like a mid-guardian male. Um, most of Nike's uh, damage comes through her, her ult, like ulting in a team fight, and then just like having your team follow up or maybe getting like a, a rend off on one or two people 
that's pretty much all the damage you're going to be doing. So a lot of defense support, a lot of health, just so you, if you are getting full committed on you ult and you become the most tanky target in the entire game. So this isn't a bit bad build on her, sorry. <clears throat> if you want more damage, um, shifters isn't a bad item to look into. Uh, usually you don't want more damage, but it's not bad. Um, a mystical male instead of the breastplate isn't the worst idea, but you do need some CDR. Uh, but again, that health from mystical male combined with all the health you get from these items, it would be and your your shield would be insane because it's a it's a sixty percent shield, right? So if you have a ton of health built, a ton of health built, your shield will be the equivalent of like another god's just normal health bar, which is kind of crazy. So. Um, yeah, that's something to think about. Mantle's never bad, even though it doesn't have health, CDR, and of course the passive that will keep you alive. Um, so Mantle's not bad. Excuse me. So that's something to look into. Also, Mantle's not bad on her because a lot of times if you're getting blown up and then the Mantle pro passive procs, you'll be able to ult after because you become CC immune, even though you were getting blown up before, so that's not bad. And of course, Stone of Gaia, health, passive, never something to ignore. And this would be a decent build on Nike. Um, the Relic choice would be teleport every time. You can go thorns because you've a really big shield that uh, you can re reflect a lot of damage with. So thorns wouldn't be bad on her. But if you're not going thorns, just go sunder wherever it may be. If I could type it, just go sunder. You sunder and then ult them. They'll take a lot of extra damage. And if you have a reinforge and then you rend them after that damage, uh, with them being slow, it'll do a lot of extra damage. So this would be the build on Nike. Something to note is hide of the urchin, third item every time on Nike. So next up we have... Odin, the Allfather. We're going to be grabbing Bluestone, of course, on him, like everybody else almost. Chalice of Healing and just two health pots. You don't really, at some point, you'll be using two abilities to clear the wave, and that's all you're going to be doing. And you're just going to walk away, so you're not going to be spamming that much mana. As long as you have your blue buff, you'll be fine. So we go Warrior Tabe on Odin, of course. He's ability based, do extra damage with uh, extra scaling on Warrior Tabe. Uh, we go straight into Breastplate. Uh, Best plate to get on him for CDR. More cages. Your cage is your most relevant thing. More shields, of course. That's also relevant. But your cage is the most important thing. More cages in fights. Uh, if you build full CDR, you can get four cages off, basically, before a phantom is um, refreshed, like the cooldown and phantoms back up. Um, CDR is important on him. However, you do team fight a lot, so you'll get a lot of assists. So how the Urchin is good. You'll get a lot of value from that. So how the Urchin is something to look into going... Uh, third item, but if not, you can go your uh, just like a spirit throw for CDR, right? It's not a bad build. Um, and then if they have any like magical D that you have to worry about, his uh, shield does not scale off health, right? So health isn't that important to build on him, but pestilence is always important. And if they have any relevant healing, you know, maybe build pestilence, even though his cage prevents healing, but you're not always going to have your cage up. So <clears throat> that would be that. He does do a lot of damage, so Shifter's not a bad item on him, but usually I would go Void Shield, just because you're going to be a lot... If you like have a Void Shield passive in your Odin Cage, your physical is going to be doing more damage to him. Um, you're usually in the middle of a team fight, so Void Shield's not bad for, to help your uh, physical damage dealers. And then, of course, I would round it out with a Mantle to max my CDR here, and just to make sure I can have as many Shield Burr Bombs up as much as possible. Now, I didn't build a lot of health, like I said, but that's because my Shield is kind of where I'm relevant uh, unless I have my cage up so as long as I have my shield up I'm kind of unkillable and I just want to have that as, that up as much as possible so I'm building full CDR for that matter so like I said shifters isn't bad on him so I'm going to leave it in here I wouldn't ever go gladiator shield on him just because he doesn't get a lot of value off of it because he doesn't have any ranged abilities um stone guy is not bad I know I've kind of beaten a dead horse when I say that with these builds and I kind of said that in the other video but a lot of builds are similar and a lot of items are just that valuable that you want to build them on everybody wing blade isn't bad on him he doesn't have any slow immunity uh in his kit so or maybe he does have his ult I'm not sure but um it's not a bad item nonetheless so I would go with that and of course something that is something or something that is sometimes overlooked is mid guardian mail again even though he doesn't need the health, the pass one is good. And if you're in a, your cage and their enemy ADC is, it's like a late game ADC and their attack speed is slowed by your cage and mid guardian male passive, they're going to be auto attacking for like once every five seconds. So it's uh, something that you could look into going and it would be decent. And then of course we go teleport. Odin's a little different. He can go with blink. Blink's always good on him because you can blink cage. You don't have to use your jump to get into the fight. You can blink cage them to their backline as fast as possible so you can get them in the cage um, and then blow them up in the cage. 
Uh, I would go blink on him literally every time, but if you weren't going to go blink on him, I would go spear or sunder. Just, you could sunder, bird bomb them, and they would take a lot of damage, so that would be the build on Odin. Next up, we have Wukong. Blue stun on Wukong every time. We know this. Um, plus the Chalice of Healing. I love Chalice of Healing. You guys know that. Two health pots. Now, Warrior Tabai on Wukong, just like everybody else. He is an ability-based warrior, so the extra power is going to help with his scaling on his abilities. Now Wukong's a little different. He can go Gladiator Shield. He gets a lot of value off of it because he can one the enemy soul lane or a bunch. The 10 second cooldown on his one and his two. And usually you can hit both the enemy soul laner and the wave. So it's good to get that. Um, you can heal off of it a bunch and use it to stay in lane forever. If I went that, I would go Hide of the Urchin third item. Hide of the Urchin is a good item on him. Wukong also is a team fight warrior. He, he kind of is a laner and a team fight warrior. He's kind of like uh, the best of both worlds a little bit. And he... Uh, um, can team fight pretty well, so he can get, stack that up pretty quickly. Now, <clears throat> with if I go Gladiator Shield here, I can go and I go Hide of the Urchin. I would go Stone of Gaia here because he has so much regen and everything. He can stay out on the map for as long as possible with the regen off Gladiator Shield, the regen off Stone of Gaia. Um, I like building this on him. It's not a bad item. And if I built Stone of Gaia there, I would go Room Forge. Now, I don't have a lot of protections here, just off the only protections I get from these two, but I have so much health. Wukong is already so hard to kill with his ult and his, the cooldown on his 3 being so low. Um, so that's something that I would build. And if I were to build that, I would go Mantle last item. So I'd have 20% CDR plus 10 if I had my uh, blue buff. So that's just a, that's enough CDR to have. This would make him unkillable. He would do so much damage with this. Um, so yeah, it's not a bad uh, build to look into. But never wrong just to go Breastplate. And if I went Breastplate, I would go the same build. And... Uh, yeah, so that's kind of what it would look like. However, Shifters isn't bad on him. You can get a lot of poke off with your one if you go Shifters instead of like Runeforge or maybe even Shifters in Stone of Gaia spot. Void Shield, of course, never bad. Never bad to look into going that. Um, Spirit's Robe isn't bad. CDR is good on, where is it, right here. CDR is good on Wukong, so you could go uh, Spirit's Robe like instead of Hide the Urchin if you are more comfortable with that, having more CDR. Um, so yeah. I, you can go Magical D, like I know I talked about going Magical D here a lot of the time, like maybe build Pestilence or whatever, but Wukong's already really, really slippery and pretty hard to kill, so it, like if they just use a Magical on you, you can ult into the air and you'll be fine for the most part, so you don't really need the Magical D, so I would usually go Stone the Guy just for the regen, but you know, it's never wrong just to make sure you never die with the Magical Defense here, so um, this would be like the normal build on Wukong. And of course, teleport, beating a dead horse with the teleport, but teleport's the best active in the game. And I'm not kidding. Um, and then if I went teleport, I would get to Sunder a second because you can Sunder, Tiger Stun, and do so much damage. Oh, something I forgot to mention with Runeforge, if you Tiger Stun and then two, you're going to be doing a lot of damage with that two. And then if they're two, they'll be slow, so then you can one and your one will, do be, you will be doing even more damage. So he gets a lot of uh, benefit off of Reinforge. Plus it just 40 power is good for his scaling on his, on his abilities. So um, I would go Sunder every time on Wukong. You can blow up targets. If uh, Frontline walks in, you Tiger Stun them, Sunder them, and your team follows up, they're dead, right? So Sunder on him. All right, now for Tier, the worst warrior in the game, Kappa, but no Kappa. Um, blue Stone on him. Chalice of Healing, um, two health pots, or two multi pots. He kind of uses a lot of mana, and he may not get his blue buff, but uh, two health pots is pretty safe to go anyway. We go Warrior Tab by like everybody else, and then we go straight into Breastplate. He can get a little bit of benefit off Gladiator Shield, but again, he doesn't have any really ranged ability, so I don't really like going on it. Sometimes you just won't be able to get it off, especially if you're against like a high pressure soul laner. Um, so if I went Warrior Tab by or not weird type of breastplate, I would go into like a spirits row maybe, um, or a hide of the urchin. I usually like just going cooldown on tier so you can get more fearlesses off, more um, stance switches off. So I would go spirits row here into a magical D like pestilence. So now I have 30 CDR, 40 with my blue buff. Um, I'm in a good spot, I'm super tanky here. Um, so yeah, this isn't bad. I would maybe go wing blade next uh, since the only thing that only CC that's really good against here is slows because those don't um, those aren't affected by his passive. You know his fat passive makes it so he can only be affected by one second on every CC. But slows don't work that way. So slows are pretty good against here. So wing blade isn't a bad item. Plus it just helps you um, you know get those auto cancels off with that ten percent attack speed. So that's decent on him. And then since I don't have full CR, I would go mantle last item. 
Now, I know you're thinking there's no damage in this build, but Tyr does a lot of damage just through his abilities, and he can set up for his team up really well just with full CDR. So this isn't a bad build, but if you're ahead and you want to just be wrecking face with damage, Shifter isn't bad, Void Shield isn't bad. I know I keep saying that, but these are like the two go-to Bruiser items on ability-based warriors. Um, so yeah, these aren't bad. And of course, you can never go wrong with a Stone of Gaia for that regen and that health and that passive. And uh, Midgardian Mail or like an Emperor's Armor. I forgot to mention that Emperor, Emperor's Armor is an item that you could go when you're ahead so that you can just siege as, as much as possible. Um, but sometimes your Guardian will be going that or your support. So um, I know I didn't put that on anybody else's build, but that's something that you could look into going as a last item just so you can siege if you're still having to siege a good amount of things. So yeah, um, teleport on tier and then we'd be going blink every time basically. Um, so you can blink into the back line, fearless people, uh, blink into the front line, set it up for your team, uh, fearless them into your team. Um, I would go blink on him every time, uh, pretty much nothing else. So that would be the build on somebody like tier. All right, so for Vimana, I already have this in here because I have a, like a preset build on Vimana, but he would go warrior tab eye, um, just like everybody else, straight into breastplate. He could value get some value from gladiator shield, so I wouldn't mind building it right but i would usually go breastplate and then if you're ahead i like going frostbound on him so this is gonna be kind of weird because you're like thinking well frostbound's an auto attack warrior thing but although vamana vamana is an ability based warrior he does get a lot of auto attacks off so he can get, can get a lot of benefit from frostbound slowing them in between his abilities that extra power helps with his scaling right so it's not a bad item although i wouldn't go frostbound if i went gladiator shield um if i went gladiator shield i would go like uh uh, head of the urchin after that but if not and i went breastplate i could go frostbound because i have enough defense or physically that i can build this uh frostbound so the health will help me out with that you have effective health and then shogun's isn't bad on uh vamana again he does auto attack a lot even though he's ability based warrior so shogun's isn't bad more cdr for him so he can get those abilities off and it helps out his team so shogun's isn't bad but Again, I know I said this a lot, but if they do have a lot of magical defense and you're afraid you're going to get blown up or you already are getting blown up, you need to build more magical D than just the Shogun's and you need that health. So Pestilence isn't bad. Um, now Runeforge isn't bad on Vamana. He can get a lot of uh, benefit off of it if he has Frostbound as well. So this wouldn't be a bad build. You're pretty tanky at this point. You have a lot of health. And if I were to build Runeforge here, I would go Mantle last item. So now I have full CDR if I have my blue buff. I have a lot of damage through Reinforged and Frostbound. If I'm slowing them, my autos are doing even more with Reinforged passive. And I have a good amount of protections in house. So I'm, I'm chilling at this point. I'd be, if I ult, I will be regening a lot and have a lot of protection. So I'll be fine. And I'll be doing a lot of damage with these two combined. Um, but if you don't want to look into going your room forge and you want to go just more ability based, like I just want to do more damage with my ability, Shifters isn't bad. And if I were to go Shifters there, I would go Mantle last item. Um, you don't need to build a ton of health on Vamana because his ult is a big regen. That's kind of the, the thing with uh, ability-based warriors. A lot of them have self-sustain, so CDR is more important just so you can get that, that sustain up more often. Then uh, it's more important than health, rather, I should say. So this would be a decent build on him, but I'm going to put the other ones in here, Forged as well. Void Shield isn't bad on him. It gives him a lot of power because it gives him 40 physical protections plus 30 power, and his passive scales off physical protections for power. So that would give him uh, an extra little bit of power there. And Wingblade isn't bad on him for the attack speed and the movement speed and his ult and 300 health, of course, is always good. And then uh, if you're getting blown up in your ult, Big Guardian Mail isn't bad. If they're just like, if their ADC is just blowing you up in your ult and you're like, there's nothing you can do about it except you can build a Mid Guardian Mail. They'll be slowed. You can catch up to them with your ult and auto them more. So that's not a bad item to go. Um, and of course, we'd go teleport on Vimana and to a Sunder. But something that I've been messing around with is kind of fun and kind of helps out your team is going sprint but upgrading as fast as possible. This way you can sprint, go into your ult, and for that five seconds, you can just uh, stomp around with Fatalis. Well, not even Fatalis, with a sprint three basically is what it used to be called, which means you don't even have to hit anybody and you'll still be uh, immune to the slows from, uh, or the at auto attack movement penalties, as it says here. So sprint upgrade is pretty fun on Vamana. I don't know how viably or how viable it is competitive. God, I speak terribly on Vamana. 
So yeah, guys, that's the second part in my series of how to build solo laners. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you have any questions or comments, leave them down below. I know that a lot of those uh, warriors are built very similar, but some of them get more benefit off certain items like Frostbound on Vamana. You wouldn't really want to build Frostbound on Guan. It just doesn't really make sense. Um, so yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed it. I'll see you guys in the next video, which will be on the guardians of the solo laners that, uh, and how to build them. So yeah, see you guys later.